Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Making 3 and today I'm going to be giving you Part 5 of What If Naruto Was a Secret Child of Minato and Mikato Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Go ahead and check out the other What Ifs over the other channels On Anime Prince I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto is Strongest Kk Toda so go ahead and enjoy that I also post what if Naruto had Madara seal inside of him at birth over and making so go ahead and enjoy that. And I also post a brand new episode of what if Naruto was an exiled saying trained by Vado so go ahead and enjoy that guys. Yes I indeed have 4 channels that I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy so go ahead check them out and yeah enjoy. And remember if you're new turn on the bell notification and see exactly when I post and comment down below and tell me so I can Reply and talk to you guys. So without further ado, let's jump right into this new episode. Begin now guys. So the last part that we left off. Some time had passed since Naruto has been in the hospital. In this time, Tasumi had came by. As Naruto, despite his weakened state, had gotten out of bed. As he apologized to her, he apologized for not being strong enough to save her daughter. The tears in his eyes, it showed just how much. He was torn up about it inside as she could see that he was in pain. However, being a battle-hardened shinobi herself, she could understand how the world was set. She understand that there was nothing that he could do, even their sensei got put down. Granted, the information about how Naruto survived did not fully came to light yet. Many believe that Minato had arrived and came upon the scene too late. However, Kiba would not visit. Naruto had gotten to know him over the time that Hana and him were on a team, and Naruto promised Kiba that he would protect his sister. Neji also came by as well to check up on Naruto. As Naruto's body was still terribly weak, yes he was. His body would not recover for some time now. But once he felt strong enough to walk, Naruto made his way. Towards the memorial. Stone. As he made his way there, he arrived to see Kiba. Kiba was angry as he lashed out at him. He attacked him. However, Naruto simply took the hits like it was nothing. As he spoke to Kiba. He was just a child that did not understand why his sister was taken away. And Kiba eventually broke down as he apologized to Naruto. However, Naruto told him that it was alright, all they could do was keep the memory of her in their hearts, and she would still be with them. As Kiba apologized once more as he made his way off. As Naruto made his way towards the monument, he was being watched by Ujeo given the tragic event that just happened. She was watching him carefully. As Naruto knew that she was there, she came down. His mother had taught her Kenjutsu. As Naruto asked her if she was worried that he would jump. Given the fact that she was watching him so carefully as he sent her chakra, trailed him through the village. She gave him a few wise words. That night when Naruto went home. The kids were asleep, the twins were sleeping as Naruto sat in the kitchen. With his mother and father as they told him everything. First of all, Minato was part Senju. However, it seems that the Mokitan gene skipped him, but that means the other kids were Senjus as well. Maybe there was a chance of them awakening that ability. They never knew. However, in the past, infidelity was committed with Mikato and them. They all got drunk. Mikato and Fukaku were not on good terms because of the way he was pushing Itachi too hard. And things happened. So they fake the pregnancy with Kushina, using seals and hide Mikato pregnancy. However, what Minato did not tell Naruto was, this was a reason why the Uchiha clan was now eviscerated and leaving only two members alive, far as they knew. It wasn't that 
Fukaku found out, but Fukaku did know something that caused a lot of problems. That was the only reason why Danzo was not dead because Minato blamed himself for that as well, that one mistake caused so many. When Naruto overheard everything as he realized that he was the brother of Itachi and Sasuke as well, he just walked away. As Kushina broke down, Minato stopped her and told her to just give him some time, which they did. The next morning, Kushina had set off everyone. As she told him to let Naruto sleep, he's been having it rough lately. She waited and waited in the kitchen. She wanted to make him breakfast, even if he wasn't talking to her. She just wanted to know that he's probably fed and okay. However, he came downstairs and hugged her. That caused her to instantly tear up, happy that he didn't hate her for hiding the truth away from him as he told her that she would always be his mother no matter what. That further caused her to broke down even more. She was happy to hear it. As she hugged him back and they talked. Some time passed as Naruto and his father was fishing. They usually did this to relax and bond together as Naruto was calming his nerves. They spoke until Naruto brought up the issue of the attackers. Who was the one that attacked them? How would they find them? Minato didn't want Naruto to focus so much on revenge. It would cloud his mind however Naruto shut him up as he told him that he just didn't want revenge. He was going to find the people responsible and he was going to erase everything they love. He was going to take away everything in their life. He was going to leave them a broken, depressed mess. He was going to end every single bloodline that they carry, every single line of family and leave them utterly alone. Then and only then will he end their misery. The sinister chakra that came from Naruto caused the village to go into full on panic as the people thought that they were being attacked by a horde of enemies. Throughout the ninja world, several people had their eyes activated through that. Naruto dark, sinister chakra that may even rival one of the most sinister Uchiha that being Madara activated several Uchiha's across the planet. Even the Renegon user opened his eyes as he felt a disturbance. Minato was baffled. He felt a lot of sinister chakra throughout his time. However, Naruto chakra had been so calm, so soft and potent yet it just switched into something dark and cruel. Something that he never expected to find from his son. Naruto had always been the calm one but that, that kind of hate was something that he was not prepared for. It was something he didn't expect and it shocked him to his very core. So yeah guys, basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place for yourself and what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode. Don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over the other channels. So yeah, let's begin this now guys. We begin this episode with a man that was roughly 6 feet 1. He had short brown hair, black eyes. From the way he carried himself, you could tell that he was a ninja. He had this bit of arrogance about him that could tell you that either he was strong enough to defend himself or he was just cocky and stupid. The man was currently talking with the person in front of him who was decked out in a business suit. The man that was in his business suit, he had on black glasses, shorts, grey hair. As his suit seemed well tailored, it was like it was a really expensive one. Around the man in the suit, there was at least 10 guards, all of them behind him to the wall. Weapons, ready to draw at any moment notice. The tall man that was standing there just had two guys behind him. However, they were more outside. These two men were talking some important deals. The man in the business suit snapped his finger. Upon snapping his finger, one of his guards stepped forward as he placed a suitcase on the table. He opened said suitcase. Upon opening it, there was several, several small bags with a substance inside. Would you mind? The tall man said. Of course not. After all, one must test the product to make sure it's a-okay, the man in the basin suit said, with a small grin on his face. The taller guy looked down as he picked up one of the small bags. He opened it as it was a blue powder inside. As he quickly inhaled the blue powder in his nose. Upon doing that, just a small amount, he felt the thing rush through his system. His eyes bulged, blue veins 
came up in his neck. As he chuckled darkly. Now this is what I'm talking about, he said as he chomped down hard. Yes. He chomped his teeth down hard that clicked together. This man's name was Chompa. There was a reason for that. His signature move was biting his opponents, yes. Chomping down on them. That gave him the nickname Chompa. The man in the business suit was known as Ayato. Ayato was a drug lord who was in control of several facilitation that he had several scientists and also Ninja Bound working for him as well. And through that he was able to create the drug that is known as X that Chompa had just sniffed right up. X gave the user a high like none other. However, it also had another effect. It piggybacked off the user's chakra and rushed it through their system faster than before, enhancing their body to an extreme degree. However, after the effects were off, the user will start to need more to keep up. This worked for those that possess less chakra than normal. So, it would work good for the bandits, the hookers, all those people that are below ninjas. Champa was a powerful man. So it wasn't going to affect him like it did other people. As the veins seemed to recede, Champa sat back down with a grin on his face as he snapped his hand. Two of his men came forward with two briefcases as they placed him down and opened it. Ayato saw inside as there was nothing but cash. It's all there, Champa said as he grinned. After all, I wouldn't go against my new partner that is. He said extending his hand. I ought to reach and shook his hand. Well, as long as you don't cross me. The both of us will become the most wealthiest man in the entire elemental nation. With your links and contacts and my drugs. There's no telling how far we can reach. X was already spreading through. The elemental nation not in a wide capacity yet. Smaller villages had a taste of X however. It was extremely small. Right now it was mainly focused in land of fire towards the southern area because that is the land where Ayato was from. But he kept his business on the down low. There was no need for Konoha ninjas to get involved in his thing. After all if they did, that would be incredibly bad for him. He was wanted for several occasions, several crimes that he has committed throughout his life. Things that would get him locked up behind bars without any chance of seeing the sunlight once again. They would lock him in the deepest recesses of the prison cell. Despite not being powerful himself, he had the money and he had the people that worked for him. And with money he could get everything that he wants. And for a man that possessed money, well, it made him one of the most dangerous men on the planet. Hiring new names were a snap of his finger. Throughout his money he was able to hide himself from any authority that might come his way. And right now he was going to spread X like a wildfire throughout the land of fire. He was going to be moving very soon. He had a nice cozy mountain region that he would enjoy himself where all of his money would come in. So he had no need to fret about Kanoha Shinobi or anything here. That is when it happened. All the lights cut. Immediately weapons were drawn. Champa looked around. What the hell is going on? I don't know, Ayato said as he got to his feet as well. Showing that he was much shorter, he was around 5 foot 5. Looking around, he reached and pulled out a small handmade crafted knife that he held closer to himself. Granted, he wasn't that strong or anything, but he would defend himself if it come down to it. As Ayato looked around when something grabbed his mouth, he was then gone. Ayato! Ayato! Champa called out. However, he heard nothing. Someone turned on the damn lights, Champa said. As he moved towards the back door, that is when he slipped on something. He ended up dropping face first, right into the slipper thing. His nose got a whiff of it as he realized it was blood. Quickly picking himself up, he backed away. He quickly reached on the table as he picked up the suitcase, the one with the X and rushed out as fast as he could. Once he was outside, he noticed that his men were dead. They were in an abandoned building, well covered. All of his other thugs were outside and yet, all of them now lie dead. 
However, Champa was not a useless man. He was once a San Ninja, formerly that is. The San was not as wealthy as the other nations. So their ninjas don't get paid that much, especially with the daimyo, sending most missions towards a hidden leaf. A long time ago, he was in a sticky situation. He got in death and he needed to pay off this death, however. In order to get more money, he turned to the wrong side, gaining contacts and soon then he realized that this was a much better way. However, he ended up in some bad deals that would have caused Secret of the Hidden Sand to be released. Information was leaked about this and he was almost captured. Good thing he decided to pack up and run, killing two San Shinobis. And since then he has been running for his life, making sure the sand would never catch up with him because he knew what he would do if he did. However, once he got paid, once again he would go in hiding with all of his money. He would allow his contacts and the man below him to do the job. He heard the skirmishes inside. Whoever was inside there was currently taking care of the rest of Ayato's men. So he ran. He ran as fast as he could. Moving with his suitcases, he hopped over the wall. However, once he did, he came face to face with someone. Champa could not see them properly. The person was dressed in all black. All he saw was two red lights looking at him. The person must be wearing some strange goggles or something. Two small red light dots looking at him. As he quickly gripped the briefcase. Reaching into his coat, he pulled out a kunai. I don't know who the hell you are, but this is a wrong night to mess with me, he said. He then moved forward, however. Something strange happened. He did not know if he blinked or something, but the person was no longer there. Years of instincts kicked in at that moment as he spun around. He cried out in pain as his fingers that held the kunai were severed, causing the weapon to drop. He quickly backed away in fear. Shock written all over his face. How did... Looking up at the person, the person said nothing at all. They just kept on moving towards him. Champo was now scared. Was this some kind of ghost? Was this the Grim Reaper here to take his life? Looking towards the suitcase in his hand, he knew how to gain power and fast. Tearing open the suitcase, the first step towards him, he quickly inhaled all the X. His body bulges, his muscles tighten, his eyes. It seems like they turned fully white. His voice even sway like he was drunk. Foam came out of his mouth as he rushed forward. The pain from his fingers being severed had completely gone. He brought his hand down but the person tilted away. Stay still, he said his voice sounding rougher than before. As he tried to grab onto the person, he swung and swung however. Only thing he was successful in doing was tearing himself out. The ex was not supposed to be taken in that quantity but yet, he was running off the high right now. He slammed his hand down towards the ground, almost grabbing the person as he went through hand sign. His chakra was coming out full force. So when he released the wind attack that he had gathered, it wept through the air like a tsunami, tearing through a blizzard, whipping, tearing past everything. Champa started to laugh. That's what you get, he said. It's a shame. I couldn't rip your throat out myself. Look at my damn hand, he said. Champa felt something as he looked down, wondering what was poking him. Looking down, there was a sword that came from his back that was now through his chest. Champa was confused. I... I killed you. The person finally spoke his voice, coming out in a whisper. Death is only an illusion. I made you believe what I wanted you to believe. You shouldn't have trusted your eyes. As Champa collapsed down to his knees, his heart successfully punctured. Blood came from his nose and mouth, the X finally going bad on his body as he dropped. The person pulled his blade out. There was a flash of light, fire, burning all the blood off his blade, not leaving a stain. Two people arrived behind him. Report, he said. All targets neutralized. One of them spoke, the voice was feminine. The other one then spoke, a male voice. Ayato has been successfully captured. Good. Rendezvous with the others. At once, the both of them said as he vanished. The man walked over and went through hand sign, a scroll in his hand as he sealed the body of Champa away. 
He then started to walk as the moonlight castrated down on him, showing his face. He was wearing a black hood that hid most of his features however, his blonde hair was visible under the hood. Barely that is. He then disappeared. While that mission was going on, a older Neji Hayuga is scarred across his face from when his team was ambushed in attack all those years ago. Currently looked down towards the warehouse from the upstairs. As someone appeared behind him, it is all done, the person said. Reporting to the leader. Good, said Neji. We will rendezvous with the others. As Neji made his way, Neji was now a Jonin of Kanoha. He had not slacked on his training, he had indeed kept up his training and become far stronger than before. Neji had just been promoted a few months back and he had to say he was liking the promotion. He gained more freedom and also more high class missions. Because of his father being in his life, Neji's outlook on things were much more positive. Granted most of the branch members were treated, well, not that well because of them being branch members but his father always gave him a better outlook on things. That is why he was so close to Hinata and treat her with respect. The girl was going to be a fine leader one day. However, he hadn't really changed much. Three years has passed and a couple of months. He had taken the tuning exams a couple months after the incident. After taking the exams, he had been tuning for a while until a few months back. He went in for the promotion to Jonin. After seeing his mission record and his growth over the past couple of years, and after being tested, Neji was awarded with the rank of Jonin, making his village proud as a Jonin level shinobi right now. Through this, he had remained friends with Naruto, one of his first teammates, the person that has been through a lot. Unlike him, Naruto took another area. Naruto's growth was far more faster than his. The news had came out that Minato Namikaze was the son of a Uchiha and a Senju. Because of the clans not getting along with each other, well, and his parents death, he was placed in the orphanage. All knew Minato as an orphan, so they did not question it when the news came out. However, that was a lie, but no one knew this except for a select few. Neji was not one of them that knew this was a lie. They all believed that Minato was a uh, Senju slash Uchiha. However, because of certain genes in both the clans, he was unable to awaken either of the bloodlines. However, it passed down into his children. One of his children was blessed though, to awaken the Sharingan and the Mokitan. And that was Naruto. Naruto Namikaze, yes, he kept his name. Minato did not change his name either. As he kept with the Namikaze name. However, this was just a lie to cover up what happened in the past. However, this was a big news. Shocking to most within Kanoha that Naruto and his siblings were part Uchiha and part Senju. And also part Uzumaki as well. Three of the most famed clan across the world. As it was in the kids. Yes, they were quite a force to be reckoned with. However, the oldest one had made a name for himself. Granted him keeping the last name of Namikaze, he was known as the Uchiha Reaper. As Neji made his way, heading towards rendezvous points, as there was a two-man team and they had to split, as he was leading the mission to over here and Naruto was leading the other one. His friend had been dubbed the Uchiha Reaper. The reason being, all those who he went after, he always reaped their souls. The last thing for them to ever see, someone had said was his eyes. Those famed Sharingan, the Uchiha Reaper name had spread through the elemental nature like a wildfire. The name alone would put the fear of Kami into most enemy heart. Kanoha ranks had been bolstered by this, the village always producing powerful ninjas. He did not only had the feats to become the next Madara, he also had the feats to become the next Hoshirama Senju. The child was a beast compared to others and he was also ruthless. Cutthroat Rootless, a lot different compared to his two other siblings. However, Neji knew that Naruto went through a lot they all have. However, Naruto took it much harder than him. Granted, Naruto was close to someone in the Uchiha clan 
and lost that person when he was much younger and then to lose someone that he couldn't save once again that he blamed himself for it took quite a toll on him Naruto was fine to talk and be around however when it comes to a mission and it comes to a target he was the worst person to go after them there was no possibility that person was to be dead that they would escape or come back alive and not to mention his abilities had turned him into one of the most feared Konoha ninja right now his name even rivaling that of his father he had just recently turned 16 years old and had already made a big name for himself while Neji had a little name for himself as well as the Hayuga prodigy but Naruto was on a completely different level it did not take him too long as he arrived at the rendezvous point his team handing the rest Neji waited before he glanced up as he sent Naruto Chakra because he allowed him to do so. As Naruto landed down beside him, is it taken care of? He asks. Yes, all known warehouses has been taken care of, said Neji. Is the target secure? Yes, we will bring him back to find out if there's any other out there that we do not know about. Our spy did not get the full detail. Yeah, I know, said Neji. That was a bummer. However, we had to move tonight, otherwise. X would have spread through the Fire Nation too quickly for us to stop it. As Naruto simply nodded his face, still covered by the hood. The mission was simple. They were supposed to get rid of the drug X. However, they had a spy inside of the warehouse. Who had told him about the one that he knew about. There was others out there. However, they had to go through Ayato's mind to get that. Which is why they're going to bring him back to Kanoha. However, the thing was... They had to move early because Ayato was selling the drugs to Chomper and he was known for passing things out rather quickly. They have been on this assignment for the past three weeks. Two teams, both of them leader of their teams. As they were leading, two up and coming tunings. Granted they weren't going up against anyone difficult and if they were, Naruto and Neji will be taking point to handle them. Time skip. Mito Namikaze opened her eyes. She stretched as she yawned. A happy bright smile on her face as she jumped out of bed and landed on her feet. Looking towards the mirror her hair was a mess. She also smelled her breath. Maybe it's not a good idea to eat snacks in the bed at night. It stayed on her breath and it always smelled a bit funky in the morning as she made her way to the bathroom and gone to refresh herself. She came back some minutes later. As she got dressed and made her way downstairs. As she realized that no one was there. Where is everyone? She said, calling out. That is when she noticed a note on the table. Mito went out to get some groceries. Sign from mom. She knew that her dad already went out. But it seems that men left as well. Maybe to catch up with his team early. So she was late one. Well, she wasn't that late. She had set her alarm clock. There was something prepared for her on the stove as she shared herself. She quickly scoffed on the food. Once that was said and done, she used her key as she locked the door. As she stepped out, she was wearing black leggings. She was wearing a black short under a red skirt. And also a red top, dark crimson that is. She had on black boots with two grey gloves wrapped around her hand as they were fingerless. Her hair tied up in a ponytail that went down to her back as she made her way. As she went to rendezvous with her team, as she was moving from building to building, she would stop by her big brother Naruto house. However, she doubts that he was there. Most times he was not. Oh yeah, he had moved out. Mom was not too happy about that. When her brother gained Chunin, he was just as Chunin for a couple of months and then he got promoted to Chunin. Once he did, he had moved out. Mom was rather upset that he was leaving, as she was angry. She even threatened him to stay. However, he kept strong and told her that he was leaving. But it's not like he was disappearing or anything. They can come and visit him anytime. But Mom was still upset. However, Mitter understand that he was a grown man now. He had spoke to her and Menma, who was not happy either, but they come to understand. That he was a grown man now and he need to have her own place for himself. Their dad had made a joke and saying that he was doing it because of all the girls that was coming over. 
although Mita was never seen a girl come over at their house before to visit Naruto. Girls that was on his team, yes, but not anyone that he was romantically involved with. Mita was a smart girl, and she didn't notice that. She had asked mom about it, however. She told her that Naruto would find someone right for him. However, something like that was not easy. But Mita was smarter than that. Her brother seemed disconnected from most things. Yes, he spoke with them, he trained with them, helping them with certain things that they weren't able to accomplish on their own. She went to him a lot of time for advice about her team as well. But yet something... something was just... different. It's like he was disconnected from the world. In a physical touch, most times it seems like he would just rather spend all of his time alone rather than hanging out with friends. Neji was a really nice person as he was the cousin of Hinata. She was glad that Neji was there as his friend. But even Neji was more involved in life than Naruto. She didn't know if Neji had a girlfriend but maybe he does. However, Neji was more attached to life but Naruto seems disconnected from it. And she started to get worried for him. That is why she stopped by every now and then to make sure that he was okay. And he was always okay. Well, that is what he told her. She arrived at train ground 12 as she saw her team there. She was not late. These two were just freakishly always early. They had became Jennings a couple months ago. With the whole system change in the academy, things were a lot different. They also had a co-sensei. Making her way over. Oh hey guys, she said. The first teammate looked towards her. Her name was Ami Uzuki. She was the younger sister of Yuji Uzuki. Quite a talented swordswoman as well. Soon to be an expert as she always says. You're late again, said Ami. Are you sure that you're not just super early? Said Mito. Actually, you're about 10 minutes late. Her other teammate, Hinata Hayuga, looked towards her. Really? You too, Hinata? Come on, 10 minutes is what? Just 10 minutes. Still, it's always good for a ninja to be early, Ami said. It's a bad show on your record if you're too late. Are you going to be late for the upcoming tuning exams? Mito eyes started to twitch. As Hinata started to giggle, find the whole thing rather hilarious. Ami would always lecture Mito about being late or doing something stupid whenever she did that. And it would cause Mito to get rather pissed off. Our sensei is not even here yet. Our sensei was here, said Ami. Actually, we're currently in an exam. We're what? Yes. Kurenai sensei stopped by a moment ago. Kurenai sensei was their main sensei while Yujiro Uzuki, older sister of Ami, was their co-sensei. Minato had all of the kids being taught in every area that they needed to be taught in. Hinata Jayugen was a different case. She had experts at her home teaching her. However, both Ami and Mito focused on Kinjutsu. As Kushina had teach Mito Kinjutsu, she had a sword however to seal away on a seal in her arm. She did not like to carry the thing on her back. She said it just felt weird. And Ami said that she was stupid for saying that. A swords person must always have their sword for perfect reach when they want it. Ami had her sword strapped on her back. A gift from her older sister that she worshipped. Hinata didn't focus on sword however. She was taught to increase her speed and strength. Because of her near perfect chakra control because she was a Hayuga. Well, there was a lot of benefit there. What test are you guys talking about? Well, Sensei told us to wait on you. But her test is to find her. And knowing Sensei this area is already littered in Genjutsu. It is practice for the upcoming shooting exams, Ami said. So the test has been going on for 10 minutes now. Yes, and if you weren't late, we could have begun already. Why didn't you guys wait for me? Because you were late, Ami said. And Sensei, had to prepare. Alright, alright, I'm late. Hinata, can you see her? Kurenai Sensei is not making it easy for us, said Hinata. Byakun activated. The place is littered with chakra. Too much, it's affecting my eyes, not to mention. She has several reflection genjutsu set up. There's a lot of her around here, but most of them are fake. The chakra doesn't tie in for what Sensei possess. Remember what my big sister taught us, Ami said. There are more ways to find person than just using special abilities. The body is our main tracker. With that, they move off. Meanwhile, that was going on. At the land of wave on the bridge. 
Sakura Haruna was rushing forward. She wasted no time as she jumped. She then brought her fist down with a yell. Boom! The moment her fist made contact with the mirror in front of her, it shattered. She immediately tossed a kunai inside that was plucked out of the air by none other than Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke caught said kunai and infused it with lightning chakra before he launched it. It burst right through the mirror where the hunter nin was. However, the hunter nin had slipped to another one, which was perfect. Now, Rasengan, a voice said from outside. The back of the mirror was exploded outwards, shooting the hunter nin right towards Sasuke, who jumped up. A brutal kick slammed right in the mass. The amount of force that Sasuke placed in cracked the mass. The hunter nin staggered back, thrown by the kick. Minma did not give the hunter a chance as he appeared behind the masked ninja and grabbed them in a suplex, lifting the ninja before bringing them down. The head of the ninja slammed roughly on the bridge with tremendous force, knocking them out clean. Immediately Minma removed the mask as he was shocked. Haku? He said with disbelief in his tone. The mirror all melted away as Sakura stepped forward. Sakura was one of a select few children that was taken by Snare Senju in her medical training program. However, some of them had the aptitude to learn her super strength technique. All in the name of making Kanoha better, however, Sakura excelled at the training. She and a few others were taken out of the academy for one year before the graduation, and they were brutally trained by the Sonin after agreeing for it. Make sure that they were prepared because in terms of physical strength and anything else, their girls were rather weak in comparison to the others, so they had good control though for their chakra, so she and the others were taken, Ami being one of them, but Ami did not take well to the super strength technique. Her chakra was good, but not enough to balance it all over her body at once to use the technique. However, she did learn medical ninjutsu, as well as Hinata. Mito could not use it, but she could heal herself. As for Sakura, Snedi was teaching the basics of her technique. The girl had come a far away in a year and a couple of months and grown exponentially stronger. She was now a well worthy member of this team. Who is that? Sakura asked, looking down towards Minma. Minma has grown as well as he was currently wearing a dark pants, a dark blue shirt and blue sandals. You know her, said Sasuke, looking at the face that was so feminine. Actually, it's a guy. What? You're lying, Sasuke said, looking towards Minma. No, I'm not, Minma said. It's actually a guy. I met him in the forest, but I I didn't know that it was him. So he's working for Zabuza this entire time. They were attacked upon arriving to the way by Zabuza and his little cronies. And they've been here trying to help the bridge builder with the bridge. And then they were once again attacked. However, this team was far stronger than Zabuza thought. Kano has been stepping up their game, and not to mention, with the members on this team, it was going to be a difficult one to take down the upcoming exams. All of them was powerful in their own right. Minma had grown exponentially over the past couple of years as well, as he had started to take his training seriously. Naruto was a big part of that for both him and Mito, because that day really haunt them. The day that they were laughing about becoming ninja saying that it was going to be pretty easy. It was the first time in their life that they got scared of their big brother. They had messed up saying that being a ninja was easy and they were going to have fun out there. They were both almost going to cry until their mother came out and yelled at him to stop. The bloodlust that he released upon talking to them, telling them that the ninja career was no joke, it scared them to no end. It made them realize that he had lost a lot being a ninja already and if they did not shape up, they would too. So despite scaring the hell out of them, he actually helped them a lot. Back at the village, both Neji and Naruto was in the office. Minato nod, they did their part. Now it was time for the information gathering part to get the information out. I will have another squad handle the rest of it, he said. You two been on this for a long while. Why don't both of you take a week off, he said to them. As Neji nodded his head, thank you, Okage-sama, he said. Alright, dismiss, Naruto. Stay here for a moment. 
I'm okay, said Naruto. I don't need uh, time off, he said to his father. I know your heart is tired, son, he said, but pushing yourself day in and day out will harm you in the future, he said to him. You've been on this for the last three weeks now. Relax, enjoy yourself, said Minato, as he smiled at his boy. Minato has been worried for Naruto for over the past couple of years. He knew that the experience had to change him, but the change that Naruto took was different. Things hadn't really changed back at the village and at home. Whenever he came by to visit and they had dinner together, all of them, they seemed like a happy family. However, Minato knew the things that Naruto had done on the, well, missions that he did. Granted, the things that he'd done were all justified, but his son had became cold and empathetic towards human life. If you were not assigned to live, there would be no mercy, no shred. It doesn't matter what you do if your name were on his list. Granted that was a good thing and showed that he was a good ninja, but Minato had gotten reports of the ninjas that had worked with him. Some of them were just new tunings that almost wanted to drop out of the program after seeing what happened on missions. Granted, Naruto has been doing this for quite some time now, but still, it scared them. New Chunins were scared. Some of them didn't have what it takes to work with him because, well, they couldn't do certain things. The bloodshed. And most people love to keep information to themselves. And when Naruto need information on the go, well, he did whatever it takes to get that information. Whatever it takes. And most time it was not pretty for the assailant. His eyes were remarkable. His Sharingan had abilities that were rather staggering. And from a recent testing done on him, they were able to find out that his Senju DNA was keeping his eyes from losing his vision. Normally a Uchiha that overused the Mangetio would lose their vision but his Senju DNA kept him from losing his vision which is a good thing. Just relax Minato said. The tuning exams are coming up in a few weeks. And you're going to be playing a big role in it, he said. So no need to push yourself that hard. Both father and son looked at each other. As no words were said. As Minato just looked towards his boy, who was looking back at him. His eyes firmly fixed on Minato's. No blinking, no moving. Okay, said Naruto. Thank you, Hokage-sama, he said. Minato knew that Naruto enjoyed being out there. He enjoyed going to work. But sometimes pushing yourself a bit too hard was not good for one, so he deserved the rest. As Minato watched him leave, there was nothing physically or mentally wrong with his son, but just he was working too much. Him being the Hokage should know that because he saw all the mission reports, all the details. When Naruto stepped out, Neji was waiting for him. This is probably my third longest mission since. Becoming a Jonin, he said. I'm mentally exhausted. What about you, said Neji. I'm fine. Really? What has been your longest mission ever, Neji asks. Two months. Y you're joking, right? You've been on a mission for two months. Yes, a stakeout, said Naruto. So I'm fine. Well, I guess when you put it like that, I guess there's not much stress placed on you to do something for three weeks. Well, you've been a Jonin for longer than I have. Yes, because I'm better, said Naruto. A snarl came on Neji's face hearing that. The slash that was on his face. It was barely visible, as the color had simply tied in with his skin tone. You could still see it when you stepped up close, but from a far distance, it was not that visible to even pick him out that much. However, Naruto and his friendship has grown. The both of them are still close friends. Become even better friends over the time. So yes, they joke around each other. When they were not on missions, that is. Just because you've been a Jonin for a bit longer doesn't mean you're better than me. Oh, is that so? Shall we have a spar to find out, Naruto asks. The words died in Neji's throat hearing that. He knew that Naruto was better than him in most areas. Well, almost all of them. That's because he had some super DNA. He was a Uchiha and a Senju and a Uzumaki. How could he keep up with that? Granted, he was from one of the greatest clans as well, but Naruto was from all three. So yeah, that was a bit too much for him. As the both of them walk in the streets, 
several girls their own age. Was Carl no to Naruto, he greeted them politely as usual. A little glance and nod here and there, which got their hearts fluttering. Some of them even called out to Neji as well. As Neji was not that bad looking, in most of the girls' eyes he was drop dead handsome and their type as well. And not to mention his friendship with Naruto got him a lot more popularity boosts. However, Naruto was one of the most handsomest boys in their age group, which got a lot of the other girls' boyfriends jealous because anytime Naruto was brought up in certain situations, the guys always saw their girls' eyes glaze over, remembering how kind and handsome he was. Naruto was still kind, like incredibly so. The part of him that mercilessly butchered and slaughtered people, he kept that away from the people that was in the village. Just like his father who had butchered hundreds, maybe thousands of ninjas in the war, and yet people in here were the girls. They still are obsessed about him, the girls his own age and even some younger. However, they knew that he was married to the red hot habanero. Despite not being a utilizer chakra, she was still a very dangerous person to mess with. As Neji patted Naruto on the shoulder, come on, let's go have a drink, he said. This was one of my longest missions yet. Let's go and celebrate. I'm not ready to go home yet. How about it? Yeah, sure, said Naruto, as they made their way to the bar. Why here of all places, said Naruto. Neji had a smirk on his face. Well, she's the one person I can get under your skin, Neji said. As Naruto eyes started to twitch, as he seemed like he wanted to be anywhere but here. However, Neji grabbed him by the shoulder and pushed him inside. The moment he stepped inside, Naruto, Neji, several voices call out. As Naruto sigh, well, 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 look who we have here. Once again, Naruto sigh as Neji dragged him along and brought him over towards the boots. Kotetsu Aizumo Hayati and a few others and one Uncle Midorashi. The moment she saw Naruto, a grin came on her face. Her little teasing buddy. What's wrong, Uncle said. You seem bummed out. Did something happen to you? No, I'm perfectly fine, said Naruto. Then watch with that stupid look on your face. Oh, it's your face, Uncle said, making the others laugh. As Naruto gave her a look, however, she seemed to laugh it off. Uncle had phoned teasing. The blonde Namikaze was rather fun. They had went on several missions together, and unlike some others, Uncle liked the brutality. He was someone that she found interesting. However, T's name was so wonderful, because she was always able to get a rise out of him. Normally, Naruto was a calm person. However, Uncle was so far from calm it was ridiculous. To make matters worse, sometime her teasing got sexual as she sat on his lap. Both Aizumo and Tetsu would kill for her to do that to them, however. She would not. Lucky bastard, Aizumo said. Yeah, said Kitetsu. As the others nod in agreement. And the thing was, Naruto did not seem to really care about it. He knew that he was good looking and most girls liked him, however. He acted like he was not, which pissed the guys off really much. Come on, give him a break. Said Neji. He's just a really calm person. Calm my ass. He's just showing off in our face. How so? Said Neji. I don't know but he is. At least do something about it. I mean God, I wish that was me. Yeah, me too. You know, my lap is not a seat. Come on, Uncle said. It's one of the most comfiest seats here. As she put her cup of steak to his lip. Now drink up. I'm not really- Naruto was cut off and she forced him to drink it. Granted he could have stopped her, however he was here for a drink. That's a good boy, she said, patting him on the cheek. Now let's get loaded! As Naruto sighed, as everyone cheered on. A couple of hours later, Naruto was walking in the street by himself. However, he had Uncle over his shoulder. He finally arrived, as he knocked on the door. After knocking for a while, Kurunai came and opened the door. Ah, Naruto, she said that smile. As she then saw Uncle. Passed out on you again, huh? I think she's doing this on purpose because she knew I'm always going to be there to bring her home, said Naruto. Yeah, you're probably right, said Kurnai. Whenever you're there, she always goes a bit overboard. You've been gone for quite some time now. 
You are on a long mission, I presume, she said, as he handed Uncle to Kurnai. Before she could get off him, though, she licked him on the cheek. As Nurta's eyes started to twitch, making Kurnai laugh as she found it really funny. You know, despite how she acts, she doesn't just do this on anyone. You're the only friend that will allow her to get away with these things. That's why she likes you so much. I know, said Naruto. Besides, he said wiping his face with his sleeve. She is not that bad. Well, good night, he said. And say hey to Asuma for me. Kurnai face turned a bit red hearing that. As Naruto walked off. Her and Kurnai share an apartment. It was rather big. There was two bedrooms. The girls have been best friend for a long while now. And despite growing up, so reaching a stage where they can move out, they stayed where they are. Well, they liked it. As Naruto walked hands in his pockets, he noticed ninjas jumping from roof to roof. The past three years has been a chaotic one for him. He did his tuning exams within the sand. This year was coming to Kanoha. It was in the sand that his name got popular because he dominated all of the participants. No one could stop him, and he has only grown stronger since then. As Naruto walked hands in his pockets, he was wearing a cloak that wasn't so long but it did wrap around him a bit. The night was freakishly cold. His past was affecting him more than he thought back in the olden days. He ended up snapping more than once on several people. The one that he regret the most was his siblings. They were just kids however. He ended up snapping on them too harshly. They had forgiven him, but it was then that he realized that he needed to deal with his shit otherwise. It was just gonna let his family be more separated from him. And he didn't want that. Yes, he did move out, but that was because he was old enough to get his own place. He wasn't a child anymore. And he figured that he was due. His mother was rather pissed about it as she wanted him to stay. But after making several valued arguments, his father agreed, but... Kushina had used a rope to tie him to the house. Literally. She had tied his hands and legs. And then anchored that to the bedroom. As Naruto had a hard time escaping. Because every time when he was ready to pack. She hid his things. She really didn't want him to leave. However eventually he got his way and leave. But that didn't change her from coming over almost. Frequently. To check upon him to make sure that he was alright. The twins as well. They were doing good though, as they were going to be participating in the upcoming June exams. His father knew the reputation that they hold now because of his heritage about their past being leaked. Granted it was all a lie because they could not tell what really happened and how Naruto was related to the Uchiyas, but his siblings were Senjus as well. Granted none of them possessed the Mokitan. However, Mito was able to use chains like his mother. And they were just as durable and tough, however, she was not that advanced yet. But she was coming up to be a fine Kunobichi, and soon enough she was surpassed. The Red Hot Habanero. She was also honing her skills in Kinjutsu. She was adapting well to a blade. She was not in any major leagues yet, but she was coming along well. And not to mention, in terms of strength, she far outclassed Minma. Minma mostly focused on speed. He was adapting more to his father's side. Yes, Minma focus on speed, he was one fast child. Not to mention mastering the Rasengan really easily. Yes, he was more adapting to his father's style. Granted that the Hyrushin was made for his father perfectly. After his father had re-engineered from the second Okage, Minma believed there is a way to push it to another level. So he started to study Fuinjutsu. And also Minma had a more calmer mind than Mito. Minma was able to access more of the Kyubi's power than Mito. Her mind was just too all over the place to tap into enough of the power. However, Minma was able to adapt rather quickly. However, the effects didn't drive them mad like most people would go because of their Senju DNA, suppressing the fox to a sense. It takes a really, really, really triggering moment for them to tap into the power. Otherwise, even if they get mad, it wouldn't happen because their Senju DNA pushed it back. However, Minma was incredibly fast, probably the fastest in his year. None of the kids his age surpassed him in speed. And he was also a quick thinker as well, while Mito was a brutal one. However, in all of that era, Naruto excelled in everything. Genjutsu, Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, Fuinjutsu. However, he was not going to take the turn of either his mother or father. 
Naruto wanted to be his own person as he was focused on different things. And his Sharingan's a big step for that. And unlike his siblings he did not possess the fox so his chakra wasn't tainted a bit by the fox chakra for not to heal people. So he did learn medical ninjutsu but he wasn't an expert because he could heal himself rather easily. However, Sneddy had the scrolls that were passed on from her lineage. So she was able to give them to him seeing that he was the only Mokidon user that could actually do them. Unlike Yamato, Naruto Mokidon was pure and far stronger. So yeah, a lot has happened. However, there was one regret that Naruto held on to. He was never able to find the ones that were responsible for Hannah's death and his sensei. He could never find them. His father got no clues. It seems like whoever planned this planned it perfectly. His siblings were kept on high watch to make sure this never happened to them. Not to mention they've never ever stepped out of the land of fire yet. As they're waiting for them to get much more powerful. This generation of shinobis has not stepped out of the land of fire. None of them had passed the border. They went on missions through the land of fire but not outside. Unlike Naruto and his squad that spread all around. Naruto was not assigned to one squad. Not to mention he did not felt it was right for him to take a team. As he did not feel like he would be a good sensei. While he taught his siblings things he did not feel like he would be a good teacher. Stuffing his hands in his pockets Naruto arrived home as he pulled out the key. Upon pulling out the key Naruto opened it. He lived in an apartment complex. However it was on the upper side of the village. Where all the fancy houses were. It wasn't that close to his parents house but it was not that far either. There was only two people living in there. As the apartments appear really expensive. The room that he lived in. It was a two bedroom apartment. As he was still paying rent. He didn't want anything too big. As Naruto made his way inside. Naruto had good taste. He had a carpet on the ground, a red design carpet. Picture frames on the wall, he had all the essentials. But what he loved the most was tea. Yes, Naruto enjoyed green leaf tea. If he could only drink that for a substance, he would, but he had to eat. He didn't enjoy ramen as much as his siblings. While he liked a bowl of ramen every now and then, he wasn't that crazy. Making his way, Naruto took off his sandals as he made his way and collapsed on his bed. He wasn't that tired, however, he was in due for good rest. Sleeping on a mission was not something he could do well. As Naruto sat down, his life has been stagnant over the past three years. A part of him just wouldn't move on. He thought that he was cursed. That any girl that he might end up with, they would eventually die. Yes, he thought about that. He had to go to Inuichi. As they had some private sessions, Inuichi told him that nothing like that was possible in the world. It's just set up differently for most people. However, Naruto has never really been with someone. Well, he wasn't a virgin. Naruto had wondered what the big deal about sex was. So he kind of got that over with. After Hannah had passed, they had taken their tuning exam some month later with a new girl on their squad. Naruto had become friends with her but he had tried to keep feelings or romantic out of the thing because he was afraid that she might end up dying as well. However, a few months back, they had met once again because he had completed a mission. She was still a chunin. And one thing led to another and, well, they slept together. However, Naruto was not pursuing a relationship. He just wanted to get this whole virgin thing over with. Seeing that uncle was always teasing about that, when she found out that day, she was literally happy for him. There was no relationship between him and uncle either they were just friends really good friends because he allowed her to mess with him and he also keep up with her attitude since then naruto hasn't really focused on that too much granted he was one of the most popular guy in kanoha his age that is maybe more however perhaps he was just too broken to be in a relationship just like kakashi kakashi has been with girls however he's never pursued a relationship Events from his past that had haunted him, as Naruto figured that he was the same. As he ended up closing his eyes, he was in due of some rest as he ended up lying down. It didn't take him too long to fall asleep, he has trained himself well to fall asleep rather quickly and wake up, also on time as well for emissions. As Naruto slept, while that was going on, Kanoha's strength has been growing tremendously over the past couple of years and everyone knew that. 
One person in particular was not happy of that. And that was none other than Orochimaru. The child that they failed to end all those years ago. Gorin was the one that had set the field. However, they failed miserably. However, Orochimaru knew that the more time passed, the stronger Kanoha will get. That is why he's planning to see Kanoha downfall. He was planning something really big. Something really big and something really dangerous. Minato Namikaze was a powerful man but he was getting old. And everyone knew that. He was not that old like he couldn't fight anymore but... Eventually, the old flash will dwindle out into just sparks. And everyone knew. However, Orochimaru was going to capitalize on that. Granted, there were still strong ninjas and Minato was still a dangerous foe. However, Urchmar believed with enough foes, with enough chaos, he could bring that village down to its knees. It's about time he strapped back against that village. And he was already making preparations for his plan. Yes, Kanoha was soon going to be burned in flames. He also had an inside man as well, so, yes, things will play out for him wonderfully. But guys, it'll be end subscribe right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to see Remember, share with all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs, guys, and enjoy them over the other channels. Links will be down in the description. But I'm over now. See you guys soon. Peace, guys.